It's local politics, but it's important, right? Because um, particularly out of New York, um, in the wake of AOC's victory, there's been a lot of people who have been uh, empowered, it's, it feels like. And um, New York passing very aggressive rent control laws for the first time in ages. Uh, New York State, you may see the decriminalization of, uh, of uh, sex work in this state. Um, there's a lot of changes happening. And we haven't had a dynamic as New York goes, so goes the rest of the country, largely because New York has not been leading on these things. So what happens in New York, if good things happen, well, maybe what, if what happens in New York doesn't stay in New York anyways, we just don't notice it as much because it, it's actually uh, functioning as a, a ballast in some ways against uh, progress. But going forward, what happens in New York hopefully will spread across the country. Here is uh, Tiffany Caban. She is uh, running for uh, the Queens DA. As you know, hopefully, there are five boroughs to New York City. And um, I don't know where Queens would rate in terms of size. Brooklyn would be like the fifth largest city in the country if it was its own city. Queens is pretty large as well. Queens is pretty big. And um, here is the debate uh, between, um, is she addressing the other candidate or what is it? No. Okay. Here is uh, her argument about her, why uh, her candidacy goes beyond where the Queens DA has usually gone. As a 31-year-old queer Latina from a working class family whose parents grew up in the Woodside housing projects, whose, whose then their parents came dirt poor from Puerto Rico, women like me are not supposed to be on stages like this. And I'll tell you what, it is no surprise to me that a group of over, overwhelmingly older white male lawyers said that I was not approved for this role. What I represent is a clean, bold <clears throat> break from the status quo. As a public defender, I have represented at any given time 60 to 80 clients, managing teams, including investigators, immigration attorneys, medical uh, professionals, as well as uh, community-based organizations and managing relationships with judges and, and district attorneys. And I'll tell you what, I started this campaign with four women sitting at a table saying we were gonna change the system. And since then, six months later, we have built a movement. We have built a coalition of hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. We are controlling the conversation to the point where every single person on this stage at some point has had to change their policy positions to meet me where I'm at. We have done what, what most thought was unthinkable. We have built the strongest coalition of support from community-based organizations like Make the Road and Vocal okay. to progressive leaders like Larry Krasner, who is the trailblazer of progressive prosecution in this nation, as well as Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And we did it all on a shoestring budget. That is what leadership looks like. We have built something... I have built something from nothing. There you go. And that was a debate. She's so good. She came go to speak out. at our uh, branch meeting of North Brooklyn DSA a little while ago. And, um, you know, I'm a abolitionist of the carceral state in general. I was a little skeptical of getting behind a district attorney who's going to prosecute. But she really she really won me over like all the way. There you go. Uh, lastly, let's play this clip. There, 